Hi, I'm Christopher. This video is focused on being patient and waiting for God's timing. Okay, truth is I was editing this video and didn't like the intro, so I cut it. Here's what you need to know. There are certainly times in life when we become impatient. We want something but just can't get it. In those circumstances, it's incredibly important that we trust and rely on God. This video provides an example of individuals from the Bible who decided to take matters into their own hands because they were so impatient and the consequences and results are disastrous. This video also then provides two recommendations for ways we can deal with our impatience. Now I certainly recognize there are times in life when we are called to action. Matthew 28, go and make disciples of all nations. There are things the Bible calls us to specifically do. That's not what I'm referring to in this video. This video is focused more on situations like when you cannot find a spouse or when you want children and it's just not happening. In those circumstances, it's important to rest and wait on God and not try to take matters into our own hands. We see a classic example of this from the Bible in Genesis 15 verse 5 which is a story about a man named Abraham who was first called Abram. He took him outside and said, look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. Okay, one more commentary. Did you notice the promise that God gives to Abram? He tells him to go outside and look at the stars and says, that's how many descendants you're going to have. That's an incredible promise and all Abram has to do is wait. Now what happens? Years go by and Abram and his wife Sarai become impatient and decide to take matters into their own hands. We read in Genesis 16 verse 2, now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, but she had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So she said to Abram, the Lord has kept me from having children. Go, sleep with my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Abram agreed to what Sarai said. So in spite of God's promise, Abram and Sarai decide to take matters into their own hands. Why? Because they're unhappy with God's timing. At first, the plan seems to work. Hagar becomes pregnant and then has a son. But Afterwards, things go sideways. We read more about this in Genesis 16, verse 5. And Sarai said to Abram, May the wrong done to me be on you. I gave my servant to your embrace, and when she saw that she had conceived, she looked on me with contempt. May the Lord judge between you and me. But Abram said to Sarai, Behold, your servant is in your power. Do to her as you please. Then Sarai dealt harshly with her, and she fled from her. What a mess! Now Abram has a son by Hagar. There's animosity between Hagar and Sarai, and life has just gotten a lot more complicated. Why? All because Abram and Sarai couldn't wait on God's timing. They tried to force God's hand. It's easy to blame Abram in this story, but the truth is I'm just like him. I have times where I'm incredibly impatient and not willing to wait on God's timing. We all have that. Life is full of times in which we have to wait. So what do we do with our impatience? Here are a couple recommendations on how to become more patient and wait on God's timing. First, we need to focus on stories of the Bible, stories like Abram, stories like Joseph, which is also from Genesis, help show us that God's timing is perfect. We only need to wait on him. Reminding ourselves of these stories, thinking about the timing in these stories can help us be more patient on waiting for God. Second, we need not give up, but bring our requests to God over and over and over again. We can and should be persistent. Luke 18 verses 1 to 5 show this. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, In a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused. But finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice, 
so that she won't eventually come and track me. So this teaching shows that we should go back to God over and over again with our requests. Unlike me as a parent who gets fed up with children asking over and over, God doesn't. God doesn't get tired of hearing from his children. So go to God with our requests and petitions, even when we're sick of the timing. Now, I personally believe that going to God over and over again in prayer is definitely going to change myself. It will change my thinking. Let me know in the comments below on whether you believe that going to God over and over again will change God's timing. Well, I hope this video has been helpful in showing how we need to be patient and wait on God's timing and not try to force his hand. I also hope that this video has provided a couple solid recommendations on how we can become more patient on God. If you have prayer requests, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'd be happy to pray for you.